<laughs> uh, super simple open. I say, welcome to the show. I'm Chris. He says he's Ross and you get to say whatever you say is how we refer to you the rest of the show. So, Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. It's, Use wisely. It's a, it's a fine edge there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's all the power and no power at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> What's the, the line from Aladdin? Phenomenal cosmic power. Itty bitty living space. <laughs> <laughs> I got a two-year-old. We're watching Aladdin. Fair uh, enough. Yeah, not okay. really. All right, I'm going to jump right into it. Do it. Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm uh, I'm Taylor. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> See, you had to think about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, walked, I walked you into that awkward moment. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, large four by fours. We've talked about rally cars. Eventually, we're going to talk about bikes. Eventually, <laughs> paging John. Um, we'll give him a shout out. It could be any John. I, I didn't give him a last name. Mm-hmm. Jonathan. <laughs> All of the Johns now want to be on the show. That did not sound great. Um, mm. Anyway, <laughs> as always, we're still social distancing before it was mandated. I'm still in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast. And Taylor's in Montana? Yep, Montana. Okay. Los Angeles, to be exact. Bose Angeles. Bose Angeles. <laughs> oh, boy. So that's Bozeman for those who are unfamiliar with. Yeah. <laughs> Is that local slang for Bozeman? I guess so. <laughs> oh boy. That's like, I live in Stanford, Connecticut and the people who go out to like the clubs and bars here call it Stem Vegas. And yeah. I don't that get the references. Horrible because I've never gone. Yeah, I've never been to Vegas and I don't go to those places. So I have no clue what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, but dude, the last I time it. I was in Vegas was for uh, SEMA. And so I had to work all the time, but it wasn't like the fun work trip where you get to schmooze somebody. Like mm-hmm. I literally was sober the entire time I was in Vegas. What? It Something was like the worst being able to Vegas. see through the matrix. <laughs> Cause you're <laughs> sober in Vegas is you're like, well, that's terrible. That's and terrible. nobody else's <laughs> right. All those casinos are really pretty when you're hammered. Yeah. Sounds like I'm you did lady. SEMA wrong. Uh, it was, yeah, it was yeah, more about the agree. company I was there representing as opposed to the enjoyment of SEMA. Fair enough. The company uh, was sober off-roaders. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, but also you're not far off from that. Uh, <laughs> so we generally discuss the news fairly early. The news has been very thin of late. Yeah. I dug up the only thing I could find that I think some people are excited about and some people are probably pretty blah about. I mean, it's kind of the news everybody was hoping for, for the Bronco. So seven speed manual transmission wasn't going to be available in the Sasquatch package. And it now is. Hell so, yeah. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> well, it, it's the kind of thing that when they said it, like I, I haven't been to the Bronco factory, but I've been in a Ford factory before and like powertrains mm-hmm. get assembled in a different building. Like, mm-hmm. They literally, like, there's literally a bin of parts and a bin of parts, and you just go and get the right parts. Like, it's not, I didn't understand why they couldn't do it. Right. It wasn't a packaging thing. It was just a, maybe, oh, actually, with the way the whole Bronco thing has gone, maybe they were just waiting for another thing they could announce. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. (laughs) They have teased it out over all of quarantine. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) It's been the dirt. That that is how we measure time now. It's not it's not time or months or days. It's Bronco. Yeah. When was the Bronco unveiled? And and then the next thing and the next. Thing. The first ones will be delivered. Maybe when we're finally over all of this, they get delivered <laughs> with the vaccine. <laughs> they come, the vaccine comes with it. <laughs> Ford's brilliant. I, yeah. I would buy that Bronco package for sure. Oh yes. heck yeah! <laughs> with the yes. uh, depends on testing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roll the dice. Roll the dice. <laughs> no. Uh, no, uh, thank you. Yeah, no. Maybe. Uh, I don't Mm-mm. know. Side effects can be brutal. Uh, we don't even know what they are yet. <laughs> Side effects of owning a Bronco or this mustache. <laughs> Is that? Yeah. That's a visual joke for the listener. <laughs> well, we it's do like... post to YouTube, so the seven people that watch it on YouTube oh, will good. actually get that joke. They'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, our view our view counts aren't very high on YouTube, but we got about twenty five hundred listeners. It's pretty Hell yeah. getting there. Pretty We're fun. Getting there. Uh, we should probably introduce Taylor and just talk about Taylor the rest of the night because he's way more. Introduce Chris's regular freeze, frozen freeze. Oh, again? Yeah, already- that's a good one too because he's got his like leg up a little bit in the <laughs> corner. You know, I've taken to. Uh... Am I back? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're back, back. And, and we got 30 seconds of sentences and about three. <laughs> so the best part of that <laughs> is when I go to edit these and post it, I'm still here the whole time and mm-hmm. you two are the ones that freeze in the video. <laughs> Whoa, really? Because That's it's my local saved file that I then mm-hmm. edit and post. Oh, so, so my commentary of... is good on the video, but not on the audio. The, the audio comes through the whole time. Hmm. Your, your visuals stills have frozen gotcha okay so, anyways so yeah now we'll, want to introduce in real time we'll introduce taylor yes <laughs> we'll we'll do it again <laughs> do it again so taylor yeah uh former austinite that's correct now a but forever maniac. texan forever yeah. texan <laughs> oh yeah do you have the native sticker on the back of the bronco no, but on the back of my eagle, I have a sticker that says, can I, can I say the F word? Is that yes, okay? Yes, you can say uh, whatever you want. If you don't like ZZ Top, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's a Texas flag. Okay. Um, so. Nice. <laughs> so that kind of jumps us. I'm going to go straight into eagle talk then. Cool. Go for it. Because there aren't a lot of people that understand what an AMC eagle is, let alone yeah. own one. But the design and the, the concept is ubiquitous these days. Well, it saves everything, right? Oh, yeah. Everything is the original CUV. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, what Alley color is All yours? Road. Um, mine is, it's right over there, actually. Um, <laughs> Just off camera. So I can look at it. Uh, it's white. Uh, it's got the brown fender flares, uh, brown leather interior, brown Excellent. everything inside of it. When I go to find images of AMC Eagles to share with the visual audience. Yeah. The pickings are thin. Really? Uh, yeah. Just link them to my Instagram. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's... the four by four one, right? The one yes. like. They're all okay. four by four. They're so all four by four. All yeah, AMC Eagles are four by fours. Yeah. So I didn't know uh, that. The Eagle and I. I'm sure somebody listening is probably going to be like, well, technically that's not right. But <laughs> probably, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, a- AMC didn't have enough money to design a whole new car when they rolled the Eagle out. And so it's based on the design of the Concorde, which was their version of like a smaller family station wagon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they also took the tech that they were putting into the Jeep. XJ, the Cherokee, and they rolled that into a station wagon. And so you've got a part time four by four station wagon with all of AMC's classy touch. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that really is amazing. There uh, it is. I had, yeah. I had to dig a little bit. I couldn't, I didn't have your Instagram tagged. So I had to, it's all right. The, the whaler tallest threw me off. <laughs> yeah, it'll do it. But you found it pretty quick. Yeah, that's Tina. Tina the Eagle. <laughs> Tina Turner. How many uh how many miles are on it now? Uh not many. When I got her there were maybe a hundred and thirty thousand on it. Uh and I've driven it um to and from Texas once and then um the rear axle broke shortly after that and I um through a wheel while I was driving home from work doing like, oh boy. <laughs> just uh, like I'm okay. just driving along and I felt like a little wiggle in my back end. And I was like, Hmm, that's weird. I wonder if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> look out the window and I see my tire, my whole wheel from the, the uh, driver's side rear just bouncing down the road like going 65 miles an hour is this like a populated highway or was this middle of nowhere uh it was somewhere between the two <laughs> okay so there was somewhere oncoming the oncoming traffic just saw a tire oh, for coming sure out yeah no there were, and oh, luckily fuck. i had enough momentum that when i dropped down onto the brake assembly and was sliding i could just steer myself off the road okay um and then you know towed it back to the go fast headquarters and uh went directly to the bar <laughs> excellent as you do 
something well, like that happens, there is no other choice. Well, it was at just that point, so you're bizarre. just lucky. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had just finished a like about as far across the country drive that you can do. I don't know why I did it in that car other than it was the car that there we go that I wanted to do it in. And you know what? She was so awesome on that drive. Um, and I slept in the back of it and it was actually like a decent, like if, if you were going to sleep inside of a car with your dog, kind of a decent setup, those seats all lay flat. Really? Um, ahead of yeah. the time. And, uh, yeah, I was just lucky it didn't do that like in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska Austin. or Idaho. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's amazing. <laughs> so for, for size representation here, that's a normal size mechanic. That's how big the eagle is. <laughs> and for the, uh, for the audio audience, it is, it's not. It, it's, it's a toddler. It's not. It's a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty funny that's, that's a cool truck though i've always liked those things it's so much fun they look like it so how did you get so the axle shaft broke yeah it's so it, it sheared off right at the hub okay it's not like there's an amc eagle parts store available is there no i thought it was totally boned i spent literally like six months trying to figure out how to source parts for it. I was talking to machine shops about making a custom axle shaft, which would have cost like more than I could have found another Eagle and bought it before it would make sense to do that. Sounds right. I was like calling the, there was like a, a stamp on my rear diff uh, from someone that serviced it in like 1991. And I called them. Up. Oh <laughs> my like, God. I don't know. Like, I'll do, and they were actually really nice. They like did some digging for me. I think really, they were, they were like kind of slow and like wanted to help out. So they like gave me a couple of phone numbers. And by the time I had about given up on it, um, a friend of mine who lives down in Sheridan, Wyoming, which is just uh, like four and a half hour drive from here, okay. like in the big horns, uh, he called me up and he was like, Hey man, you're still looking for parts for your Eagle, right? Cause I'm looking at one right now. That's just rotting to pieces. Oh no. Perfect. Yeah, it was like like buried like six inches in the mud, just like, um, and I I bought it for uh, not very much money. Uh, I don't remember how much money, but not very much. It was in rough shape. Okay. Um, but the axle wasn't in rough shape. Nice. So That's all you need. Drove down there with the trailer, yanked it out of the mud. Uh, you know, pulled it up onto the trailer, uh, drove it back home, and pulled the axle out of it and then drove sweet miss tina home nice. then, uh, the, uh, well done heater core blue as soon as i was home perfect <laughs> oh. and back to the bar right <laughs> no no the heater core it's like whatever i just i i mean i can't bypass the heater core here because it's about to be winter for the yeah i was to say you're gonna need that montana monster right so i'm just kind of slowly pulling the uh the dashboard off of it Oh, I actually, fun. I have an update about the Eagle too, which might be somewhat disappointing. Uh, I decided to sell it to my wife. <laughs> okay. Ah. Um, Business transaction. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, she wants, she, she, she and I share this like love for shit box, old trucks and, <laughs> and four by fours. <laughs> um you're on the right podcast she, bud <laughs> yeah <laughs> but she doesn't like to drive stick and we have okay. uh an f-150 that is a whole nother story that we can get into that she <laughs> bought that's a five-speed manual that we're selling and um then i've got my 85 bronco which is the like four on the floor with a granny gear so might as well be three speed um she's not really into driving any of those i'm not about to get rid of that bronco i bought it she actually found it. I bought it when the uh, Eagle took a shit and I knew it was going to be a long time to fix it. And uh, I fell in love with it hard. It's so much fun. Um, it's a good looking Bronco. Yeah. yeah. It's like good looking and also like just like a big dent. So <laughs> it's a big, more, so you don't have to give a shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the, um, the epitome of luxury is a vehicle you just don't have to give a shit about. Right. Exactly. So I love that car. Um, That's a cool truck. I, I'm pretty committed to the Bronco. So Dude, when those green Sarah, wheels are really nice too. Yeah. yeah. 
they the, like the weirdly work days. oh for sure well and there's like one panel that's like slightly off colored and it kind of matches yeah like yeah. The, the scrum fender <laughs> yeah when i pop my my go fast tent that i keep on top uh the tent fabric's the same color oh really that's well, perfect no. It's like, wait a That's minute. That's very on brand. Look I at that. I saw gotta, one with it deployed. My hat's got to match my shoes. <laughs> it's exactly Which what is, it is, right? <laughs> wheels matching. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, wait, does the fabric match the fender or the wheels? Again, which means in turn that we froze again. There we go. Does it, does it match the fender it or looks. the wheels? Uh, it's closer to the color of the wheel. That okay. picture is super duper washed out and backlit. But well, it's um, thirty-five. It's actually film. Yeah, All of film. it is, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible with a digital camera. I'm I'm so bad. Oh, that's part part of my day job is shooting. So, <laughs> my, I'm a Sony A7 full frame. So, okay, well, cool. I shoot thirty-five millimeter, and that's like full frame, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about Go Fast Campers, because now that we've looked at a bunch of pictures, yeah. people listening should know where we're going with this and and why the uh, the bike affixed to the to the tent on the roof is such crazy and amazing concept. Totally. So I work over at Go Fast Campers. I'm the director of customer experience there. Um, so basically. We have a lot of customers in line waiting for campers. We build all of them right here in Montana and uh, all of the communications gets managed by me. So I talk to everybody. I also run a podcast for Go Fast Campers called You're Really Out There. There's the plug. Um, Go Fast Campers is a uh, camper company that's been around for almost three years. Yeah. Um, we've experienced rapid, rapid growth in those three years, but yes, you can say that. Yeah. But smart growth. I'm like, uh, I'm so stoked to be a part of it because there's so much intention behind every move that everybody makes there. Uh, and it's all about longevity and making sure that we can give our customers the opportunity to have interesting experiences out in the world. Mm -hmm. So we make a camper right now that goes on the back of your truck. That is, um, a tube frame on the bottom, uh, sort of like, like a roll cage you could think of that have panels that open and close on the sides and the back. Uh, and then integrated on top of that is a rooftop tent wedge style. Uh, that has a transformer floor so you can come and go you can access the bottom of your truck bed basically it blends your truck bed into your tent so that you have this all of this space it's the best thing in the world it's pretty um, amazing it's a solid elevator pitch too yeah totally and then you, your truck is still a truck and that's kind of the biggest thing all, all of us guys at, at go fast guys and girls i should say at go fast we want our truck to still be a truck we want to still be able to like do silly stuff and like hit jumps and like you know <laughs> not get stuck all the time we don't want to max out our payload the camper only weighs depending on which one you're looking at or that one's a little bit heavier because that's a beefy boy it's uh, a big boy <laughs> it is oh man yeah that's a for the listener that's a, a aev prospector with a camper on the back uh, i'm actually driving in that picture are you really uh, yeah. nice that is an in-season aev prospector in like <laughs> nuclear orange yeah <laughs> Um, that truck is very cool. Uh, my, it, my favorite thing about it is how, when it's closed, what is it? Yeah. Six inches? Exactly. So the, the, oh, the, we, we also have a rooftop tent, which is just the tent portion with a fixed floor for your forerunners and your other SUVs mm -hmm. and things like that. They've taken um, off in the forerunner community. Holy shit. I mean, yeah, we make that direct mount for the Forerunner, and it's the lowest tent that you can get for your Forerunner. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, yes. I found an eighty series. Of course, yeah. it's <laughs> your color too. Is it? It, it? I think it is. I can't tell if it's green or not, but it still no, looks it's good. blue. It's yeah. like it's blue, dark blue. Um, People with the, bigger mm -hmm. built rigs than me. <laughs> when it closes <laughs> up, yeah, six inches, and it sits, you know, as close to your cab as we can get it while you're still able to uh huck your vehicle uh without too much flex going on so here's here's mr cordis did you guys both freeze i don't know but we can see your screen which is your whole screen <laughs> damn it <laughs> chris what are you doing on those websites <laughs> it's literally yours and my yeah, chat yeah there it is <laughs> 
So that kind of brings me to my newest vehicle. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so you're showing that that excursion. I did not get an excursion, but oh. I'm just I I'm assuming that that one has the uh, seven three turbo mm -hmm. diesel power stroke. Um, I hope it does. Yeah, I hope for everybody's sake that it does. Then it doesn't have the V10 gas. Correct. Engine. Um, I Godless. just picked up a, a, a 2000 uh, F250 Super Duty eight foot bed. It's bright red. Uh, nice. <laughs> and, That's a uh, lot of truck. It's a 2000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, um, I actually just launched a podcast episode today where I summed this story up. So if anybody wants to check it out, <laughs> episode 11 just launched. Sweet. <laughs> Very um, cool. But our F-150 broke down in South Dakota coming back from Iowa. We were visiting um, some family there and uh, the F-150 took a shit on the highway. Oh. Uh, the transmission turned itself into a grenade. We got stuck mm. in Vermilion, South Dakota, which is a beautiful place. Um, is it? Be a beautiful really place to be stranded. <laughs> yeah, well, there was really sweet people that helped us out when we were stuck, and there was a Casey's General Store, which, uh, Chris, you're in the Midwest. Do you all the Casey's where you're at? Yep. Oh, yeah. So I've never lived somewhere with a Casey's, and so I love the shit out of Casey's. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty great, actually. Every small oh. town around here has a Casey's. And the every point of, of Casey's, that. so giant corporation in every small town, right? They'll never be cheaper than the lowest price of gas in the town. So that was their thing of like all of the local small town gas stations. They never ran any of them out of business. They always <laughs> matched the price. See, Casey's is great. Yeah. I love Casey's. Also, I don't know if that was a corporate thing or not, but that's the way it was explained to me in every small town I've been in. <laughs> <laughs> you just plugged this shit out of them. So <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Casey's. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got stuck there for three days because we broke down on Sunday. The next day was Labor Day. So we couldn't get out of town until Tuesday. We bought that... Uh, f-250 in town there and okay hauled, hauled ass back home we drove through the night left at like 6 30 on tuesday is it a crew cab like seven in the morning extended cab extended cab um it's i'm so jazzed on it and then i just last weekend drove all the way back to pick our truck up with a trailer so okay. i did a i think a 30 hour day that's exactly what we're looking at yeah i i don't have a picture of it on instagram <laughs> yet because i don't want to um, I'm doing some stuff to it that I'm kind of pumped about that I, I'll be showing off soon. Um, it, it's going to get a big boy camper on the back of it. Oh. We don't make a lot of eight foot bed campers. Um, so we're, we're, <laughs> we're going to slap one on there and see how it looks. And then I got some new, uh, the new Toyo AT threes. Nice. I've been wondering about those actually. Um, I haven't mounted them yet, but I'm really, really pumped about it. Does it what have do you, the, the, silver wheels like that yeah here i'll 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 just show you a, a <laughs> cell phone picture of it so that we can what tires do you guys usually run on the rigs with the campers on them um i mean it really Variety. depends a lot of us at the shop have like on our dailies we've got like the um the uh falcon wild peaks because yeah like I have those on my three w's yeah mm -hmm. i like them uh, they're good in the snow, like really good in the snow. And they're also like mad affordable. They're um, so cheap. They're like half the price of the, uh, of the KO twos. Nice. Oh, that's a good looking truck. That is a good looking truck. That front um, end has not aged poorly. It is like, oh. it's still attractive. Yeah. It's so much cooler than like the F-150 of that era. Oh yeah. Uh, oh my God. That I, was so bad. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm jazzed on it. Well bought. Uh, uh, what uh, tires? I don't know. Um, I've got those Toyo that just I think the AT ones <laughs> on the Eagle, um, and then some BFGs. Everybody over at GoFest loves BFGs too. So, yeah, that's, that's what I yeah. run on the Land Cruiser. Yeah, that's the good stuff. I haven't. I haven't. I have a an 08 Sequoia that I'm replacing the Land Cruiser with because oh. four kids. So okay. yep. I need more space and seat belts and airbags and latch points. You should get an excursion with a seven three. So <laughs> I'm fully on board with that. The only issue is because the excursion was considered a, like a, like a super duty, like a heavy duty truck. They yeah. weren't required to put the child safety latch systems into them. Oh, oh. so yeah. there goes that. 
So oh, like right. everywhere where I would properly like punch car seats into it to make sure they don't go anywhere, yeah. I would be stuck with like the old seatbelt going through the back of the car. You so, don't want that. Yeah. yeah. Which is what I have in the 94 Land Cruiser. <laughs> yeah. This is my first car that's um, modern at all, period. Um, Fuel before, injected? It's, yeah. Before, <laughs> well, I guess I had a, a 92 uh, Dodge B250 like panel van. Okay. Uh, that was like some early EFI. Um, but uh, no, like th th this everything else that i own is from 1985 or around there and so this thing feels like like Spaceship. i have power, power windows <laughs> what i have like a, my my seat is even like power controlled uh it's got airbags crazy <laughs> it's so cool it everything can, like, the bronco doesn't have <laughs> right it comfortably does 75 and you can like have a conversation with somebody yes wow. that <laughs> that right there is so i've i've driven the land cruiser to colorado a couple of times 80 miles an hour with an inline six. Oh yeah that's what the bronco has yeah from 1994 yeah is a little over 3000 rpms and it's a long day just listening yeah. to the drone like my car <laughs> literally <laughs> where the sequoia when we go out and back to we've been out back a couple times in that and it's less than 2000 rpms and there's yeah. zero wind noise, which in Kansas, that's an issue. Like it blows a lot here. So sure. And all of the kids, they, they sit farther away in the bigger side. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is it quieter, but it's also quieter. <laughs> so you, the, I think we called it the bread and butter is the platform, right? Is the, yeah. So that's what I was talking about earlier. The, so we have the platform camper and the platform RTT. Um, and we didn't get into, uh, Ross, you were talking about the, we were showing those pictures and I have the bikes mounted on top mm -hmm. of right. my tent with it popped open so that the tent has gas struts, uh, and it also has, um, an extruded utility track on the sides so that you can mount all kinds of awnings and lights and things to the side, but also we make, uh, crossbars that we call the BFRAC, um, and they integrate really, really well with, I use one up trays on mine. Perfect. There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, again. so it's like, it's like modular additions you can kind of throw onto it. Totally. And the idea here is that it isn't just a tent, but also it can live on your vehicle without being cumbersome and making you change your lifestyle. And it also can be a roof rack really easily. You don't need a roof rack right. in addition to that. You can keep on top like 500 pounds uh, and Whoa. if you want to pop it open, uh, like around 100. Um, I keep two pretty heavy mountain bikes on top of mine and we crank it open and, and camp and <laughs> call it a I, night. I love this one that's yeah. really wild that one's really sweet was that like a c10 yeah mm -hmm. and it and it is dropped yeah i think that I, has, oh yeah i shared this as a out. last i shared this as a last call ross like <laughs> okay forever ago on hooniverse <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah the thing about so many of the rooftop tents and some of the guys that i've been on the trail with is that there are these like you know 12 or 14 inch tall contraptions that put the weight at the worst place and they weigh like 120 pounds and they have like basically tarps to hold them down when they're totally. not being used. Yeah. The bag is a nightmare. And that, that kind of brings me to the newest tent that we just started uh, pre-orders for. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's, that's such a good looking truck. Very cool. Um, so we just started taking pre-orders for uh, something that we call the super light, which is uh, so the, the platform scrolling, RTT. Scrolling. Yeah, you'll find it. <laughs> no, I know where they were. I just had to get back up there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the platform RTT is uh, made to become part of your truck and it's made to be a roof rack. The super light, on the other hand, weighs half as much, uh, costs less than half as much, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. It weighs less and costs less. Yeah, exactly. So it's the opposite of what Porsche does. Yeah, I was saying <laughs> lighter normally means double the price. Yeah. So basically the whole concept behind this guy was um, how do we take as many of the extemporaneous features and weight adding componentry 
from this and boil it down to its purest essence, which is just a tent. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we came up with, or I should say Wiley, the founder of the company came up with the concept of a frameless hard shell tent. So basically he calls it panels in a bag. Uh, It, you don't have to struggle with a bag to take it off or anything like that. It's literally uh, the same roof and floor that we use for our platform line, but encased in fabric, the hinges fabric. Um, wow. It weighs, hinges fabric? Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. I mean, it, weigh, I mean it, it weighs 75 pounds before you put a mattress in it. So it, it's made for everybody. Like it's made for people that have like, a, the more dirtbag lifestyle. It's made for people that drive minivans <laughs> that don't want to have to keep a tent on their thing all the time. It's made for people like Wiley, who's going to run it in Nora. Um, That's and, insane. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> I love this contest, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's so, so funny. Fun. There, it, it, this was my favorite one right here. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so me. It's also, I think right now, the only... Uh, roof tent that will uh comfortably sit on the new broncos uh crossbars because their weight hmm. limit is pretty low are they really mm, they, i didn't mention that in all of the press releases <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll do that next month ross so they'll give us something else to talk about. <laughs> yeah fair that's fair it's interesting though because i know the uh the jk wrangler you had to mount the it's like an roof, exoskeleton. Like a roof rack. Yeah, like clamped yeah. around the side and went down to the bumper. And the JL, they have those like, I don't know, they're like C clamps almost. Yeah, yeah. I didn't Rhino realize rack, that the Bronco was limited. Rhino it. Rack also makes a pretty good uh, like backbone system for the JK and the JL that mm-hmm. like taps into the frame of the vehicle and just has a couple of pylons up on top. And we've got a couple of customers that run the platform RTT on their uh, Jeeps, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Google searching. Then you lose right the now. ability to pull a roof off, which kind of defeats the purpose though. Totally. Well, see, my dream with my Bronco <laughs> is uh, to run my RTT like you showed in those pictures and then to be able to pull the, uh, the topper of the roof off the back of it and be able to access the, the whole back of the, of the truck. Okay. That's a fucking goal. I like that. That's really cool. So would that be the, just the platform or would you be, I don't know that I followed what you were saying. <laughs> so uh, you showed the picture of my uh, rooftop tent on my Bronco. Yes. Um, right now, the way that I have it set up, it's mounted straight to the, um, the topper. Oh, you know, I see it now. Bronco. Modular roof thing. Um, I've got an idea to make basically an, an exo cage for it just for the rear mounts um, so that I could. Uh, so like these back here, you would like come out. Right. So yeah, exactly. And then I could run it topless, you... but still mm-hmm. have the tent on the back. I like that a lot. Yeah. I think it would be fun and also a pain in the ass. It, it would be, oh, the, it would be great until it <laughs> rains. <laughs> on the yeah, highway, exactly. that could be all sorts of turbulence and you know Bronco, Bronco aerodynamics don't. that they never figured out before bronco don't do the highway <laughs> uh, <fair. laughs> in We're, line six <laughs> exclusively yeah. back roads with the bronco too shy so that's too why he just bought shy. a super duty exactly throw the so, bronco on a trailer i'm looking through chris's show notes and i see you bought a Haas machine oh yeah uh it's enormous um, yes like a walk-in one or is it yeah so we okay. have we have a couple of smaller ones um, that we machine all of our smaller components with, but we just got like it, it is like earth shatteringly yeah. enormous. Like the mm-hmm. book that they had to pick it up with was probably like four hundred pounds. Um, <laughs> for the so, for the visual audience, that's a real mm-hmm. size human next to the truck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good for call back. <laughs> um, that's so, awesome. Those things are so fucking cool. Yeah, we're really, really excited about that. Uh, right now, we're booked out to orders that are placed today. We're expecting to start production on them in August of 2021. Yeah. That's such a good problem to have. Oh, my God. You know, and it's kind of always been the game since I started with GoFast. Uh, and what we would do is 
uh, we would get booked out really far and then that would drive everybody on the design time, the design side and the production side to innovate and figure out how to, when I started, we were building five campers per week and that was a lot. Uh, now Sounds we like a lot. Like 18 campers per week. Wow. And the goal for later this year is to at least double that. So wow. tooling up and getting big fancy machines is kind of what that's all about. Yes. Very cool. To yeah. Tooling is amazing, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is. So the, the uh, aftermarket company I used to work at, they would get requests for specific runs of parts all the time from random people that would just be like, this broke on my truck. I need you to make it. Yeah. And if it was viable, they would research, all right, well, how many versions of that specific truck were sold? And then how, and then they would try to do some research on how many of them are failing on other people's trucks. And it had to be in the hundreds of thousands before they would consider My God. trying to replicate the park. Wow. Yeah. But I mean, uh, core do supports. You make a lot of trucks. Yeah. Core supports on Super Duties, uh, the generation before yours was like one of the last things that I was a part of when <laughs> they were discussing those. <laughs> the box ones. Yes. Yeah, the OBS. Graham has one of those, one of the other founder of GoFast. And seven. it's it's Graham and Wiley are the main two, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. I get that from the podcast, from your podcast. That's oh nice. <laughs> yeah. I had them on when we dropped Superlight uh, and they got to tease it out. Oh, they're pretty fun. How long have you been with the company? Uh, a little over a year. So I met those guys. I ran a, a coffee shop in Austin, Texas uh, called Flat Track Coffee Roasters. Cool. Um, we were the best coffee shop in Austin. Probably still are. Uh, I love all those folks. Um, and the owner of Flat Track was really into the off-road scene and overlanding and um, obviously dirt track racing with motorcycles. And that was kind of our whole Mm -hmm. our whole thing um we ended up him and i ended up building out a off-road trailer uh and turning it into a mobile espresso bar that that's amazing that's the coolest yep. and a rooftop tent an espresso machine a batch brewer a grinder everything that you would need and it was all plumbed out and so we would just roll up on events all over texas and then we went to expo west a couple of times uh, and made coffee for everybody out there in Flagstaff. Uh, and it was just so much fun and such what a, a business hustle. trip. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, it was so fun though. And, and, and such a hustle. And I met Graham and Wiley out there and my buddy, John Prawley at the Radivist, um, knew them because he was running a, an RTT on his 80 series and he introduced yeah. us and we just, we got along, we hit it off and, um, I don't know, just decided to make the big move. Go talk to every customer of Go Fast Campers. There it is. Yeah, yep. Exactly. That <laughs> van is so much fun. That van was my daily for a long time. <laughs> was it really? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, because the transmission in my van took a shit and I was waiting for the shop in town to source a new transmission for it. And so, and I, I ran the shop. So I, that van is what Flat Track started out of. Mobile so advertising. Just, yeah. Uh huh. I, I just drove that thing all over the place. It was burnout city, man. That thing was tuned up. 350? So fun. Yeah. I am trying to scroll to find a picture of the trailer. <laughs> the trailer? And, yeah. I don't, I don't know that there are any. Oh, man. I've tried. It's hard man, to find. I found John's pull. 80 series. Yeah. Which is no longer John's 80 series. Yeah, he sold it. Yeah. That's, that's at... Uh, I took that picture. That's out at, uh, at Expo. At Expo. Yeah. Yeah. His now he has a 70 series, I think. Hmm. I yeah, think he, he, got a, he got a troopy. He got a troopy. Yeah. He got the best oh, of the versions of his the stuff. Fuck? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so, so cool. pumped about it. Oh, I found a trailer with a mustache that looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's a different trailer, but that is. Damn me. it! <laughs> that, but it's you. It is yeah, you. Yeah. That, that's a race trailer. Yeah, we basically built a kitchen out into that, and, and a whole other coffee shop, and we were opening a second location and tentatively open through the trailer service. That that was a whole. That's amazing. That running running a restaurant is uh, uh, a 
a special kind of hustle. <laughs> it, it is. I believe every part of that. My, my wife was in the restaurant industry for a number of years when we first started dating. And that, yeah, that's a different type of work ethic. Yeah, it, it took a, a couple years or decades off my life, I think. <laughs> <laughs> years or decades. One or the other. Well, we'll make a coffee pun here. It's definitely a grind. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> See, it's a better joke if I don't tell you it's coming. It's always better if you explain the joke. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like, imagine a get, like the trailer thing. If you just put together an off-road trailer and pulled it with like an 80 series, went to like Jeep Jamborees or like Moab Easter Jeep Safari, you know, everybody there wants coffee because everybody's drinking at night. Oh yeah. Wake up and be desperate for some, for a cup. That's I, ba- based on the power output of my 80 series, I would suggest maybe a hundred series. Go get a V8 to tow. There. <laughs> We're LS swapping 80. Best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah. We could do Joe Rogan's the icon which so that made me made me think when you were talking about how orders <laughs> now that's only 137 that so weeks good. ago taylor yeah <laughs> like, man, so long ago that was a good trip that's very pre-covid um oh yeah but when you're talking about like orders now wouldn't begin production until august 21 yeah so that's that's what we're estimating right now and but that's, kind of the fun the fun it's really not that far it's not, and we've also shortened it pretty regularly. We'll we'll do this thing where production tools up, or like we put a whole new building up uh, in May while everybody was at home during COVID. Did all of this planning, and then we were able to roll the lead time back by like five whole months. Really? So, yeah. I mean, it, it's we are always trying to close that gap, and as it gets closer we i i will hit every single one of our customers up and say hey you know how we said it was going to be next year well instead it's just a couple of months from now and i should say i should say that that is for the the platform camper that we were booked out that far the rooftop 10 on the other hand uh if you called me tomorrow and you wanted to order one we could probably get you one Oh man. So how many, <laughs> do you ever see that like somebody places an order and then when you contact them for delivery, they're in a different vehicle? Yeah. Um, we have folks that will like roll their trucks while we're building a camper for them. Oh, or, no. um, Oops. We, we, we do oftentimes have folks that are, so that's the, that's the super light. That's yeah. The, well, and the reason I, I came to it is you can see kind of the fabric Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's, li- cool. it's literally a tent up there. Like it's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's very much a hard shell. Uh, there's no bag to take off and put on, um, and it sets up just as fast, almost as our platform line. It doesn't have gas struts. That's my um, next question. Still, if it's uh, that light, I mean. Yeah. So it's just got it's got in the back there locking poles. So when you okay. go up there. You have two poles that swing down. You put them in position, and you just extend them. That's it. Game over. Okay. That Can't honestly, s- I mean, given I am by no means whatsoever pro- a professional on this specifically, but that seems like less moving parts that could fail than even just like hydraulic struts. That's the whole idea. The, this thing, the basic principle behind it was make it as light as possible, make it as affordable as possible, and one of the like, benefits of that is nothing on it can really break yeah and one of the tenets of our whole company is that if you break your shit you can fix it right this stuff is it's made to last yeah Yeah. it's uh you guys did the load you lotusified or lotified it you simplified and added lightness yeah (laughs) exactly um what this is going to be a a a bicycling reference but uh, Keith Bontrager used to say, um, I'm probably going to butcher it, but strong, light, cheap, pick two. Well, exactly. Case, pick three. <laughs> but basically the principle Miracle is, tent. you can make a bike that is strong and you can mm-hmm. make a bike that is light, but it will be expensive. You mm-hmm. can make a bike that is strong. You can make a bike that is cheap, but it's going to be really heavy. Well, in this case, we completely blew that out of the water oh sorry i just found pictures of the of the 
the go fast uh, Raptor all liveried up. Oh yeah, love that. Such a good look. That really, truck, is. that truck is so much fun. Oh, I'm sure it is. Mainly because you have roads where you can actually get out and actually use all of the truck. Yeah, oh, what yeah. the Raptor's designed to do. Yeah. Oh. Montana's the best. So, real fast, Austin to Montana is a fairly substantial change. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Did it? <laughs> did I mean, because you haven't had winter before. I mean, Austin winter is oh, like. Buddy, yeah. So, <laughs> so, and I'm, I grew up in Houston, which is even hotter. It's all than it's the surface of the sun. Uh, before we moved here, I had never, uh, really seen snow. Um, it like had snowed like maybe once or twice in Texas where I lived, like just like a little bit. It's like a uh, dusting, but they canceled everything. Snow. Right. Well, yeah. In, in, snow. In, Texas, in Texas, if it snows or there's ice anywhere, everything shuts down here. <laughs> just not equipped for it. Yeah. Here it's, or Montana, it's Tuesday. Yeah. Mon right. In Montana, it's like you could died <laughs> driving to the gas station for like six months out of the year it's awesome <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> it's a yeah. variable you've never dealt with before um and you know i was nervous about it and when we moved here the two things that i had to adjust to the most were it got dark earlier yep and i couldn't really ride my bicycle anymore mm -hmm. really uh, it was just it was too cold and too snowy to ride a bike okay so i started running tire bike. because i have to oh. i have to have a sport so i started running a bunch uh for my winter activity um i think maybe this year i'll Seems try like the worst time to, to run ski. i don't know um but i'm really i'm pumped for winter i don't i it still to me is uh kind of a magical experience because it's so novel because i'm not used to it at all in in like, des december how early does the sun set like 4 p.m yeah exactly Fuck. Okay. oh my god <laughs> i did yeah. i did london in november back in like 2010 2012 and for whatever reason when i my geography whatever i think england is just east yeah or in fact so way, north, way the yeah. hell north and so like <laughs> The sun came up at like 9.30 in the morning and was sitting yeah. at like 4.15 in the afternoon or 3.45. Like, it was nuts. But in the summertime, we have days that last basically forever. It's <laughs> That's so pretty cool. cool. Um, so, like, the sun doesn't go down to like 10 p.m. And you know what? That's a good like, trade-off. I'm kind of a night owl. I kind of like the nightlife. Like, if the sun goes down at 4, that means you're partying at, like, Six. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I like that. I yeah. feel like, oh boy. I feel like this is very specific to, I, I, when you said like Go Fast is three years old, I feel like, I don't know how I found it, but I feel like I've been, I've known about Go Fast for at least three years. Yeah. And this is mm -hmm. always what it made me think about is early on, they had pictures where they were just jumping everything with the tent on. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. I mean, and it's like, we're, I wasn't joking. Wiley bought a race truck that we are taking to Nora <laughs> oh. with a tent on it, and he's going to race Nora with a tent. That's insane. I mean, to think 10 years ago, rooftop tents weren't even like a thing, and now you guys are going to do like a full-scale well, race. I, 10 years ago, rooftop tents were a thing. They just weren't nearly as ubiquitous or as fancy as what we've got going on now. You, yeah, it, you know what I mean. Definitely not here. Put still. Tents on top of uh, on top of cars since cars were a thing. Yeah, right. But the off roading yeah. and the like synonymous kind of you know overlanding and rooftop tent living is now just like all right. Well, you can go run Baja and then also you know yeah do what Chris just pulled up in this picture. I that would scare the fuck out of me. This <laughs> is a you. touch yeah. close to the edge for me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's gonna be a hard pass. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Seriously, so cool. his left foot looks like it's on the literal edge. It does look like that, doesn't it? That's probably like much more of a fall than the picture leads you to believe. Oh, it's insane. Oh, man. No, thanks. I don't no, no. <laughs> Opt out. I'm supposed to be the Flatlander, Ross. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heights, are, heights are high consequence. So... <laughs> 
the the last picture the jump ability index do you actually have varying degrees on the the <laughs> tents or is it just all of them are a yes all of them are a yes the the <laughs> determining factor for if you should or shouldn't jump your truck is the following um Will it destroy your truck? Uh, <laughs> it probably depends on how well maintained your truck is and how many times you plan on jumping it. Um, or have jumped it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, every then, truck will jump once. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and then other than that, I think it's like how wild and crazy are you? But the, the tent... That's, that's a short flow that, chart. The that's like one fine. and then near, near it splits and then it just stops. Yeah, yeah it's just but two. It, it it puts the decision on the driver and that's really what's important. Uh can you? Yes. Should you? Yes. Will you? That's up to you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so all the tents are good for jumping. Yeah. Good. So like so, the, and we'll there was only one thing on the Nora. website I didn't understand. Yeah. The flight deck. Oh, the flight deck. The flight deck's rad. The flight deck is basically a, a modular bed storage system. Uh, it's made up of the same um, root, like what we call our beef rack, the roof, uh, um, the roof rack that we make. Uh -huh. It's the same bars. And actually in that photo that you showed of the guys sitting on the ledge, yeah. if you look closely at the bed in that Raptor, you can see he's running those bars across the Raptor. That is the idea behind the flight deck um we only support the tacoma right now yeah um but there's a lot of people driving tacomas um yep more tacos than any other smaller mid-sized truck by far yeah and the uh the flight deck splits your bed into two layers so that you can store all of your stuff underneath um but then you can easily access everything through panels that just lift up hmm. that's um, pretty brilliant and then the benefit of using our beef rack is that you can have all of these tie down points throughout because there are utility tracks running through each of those silver um, mm -hmm. bars. Oh, like through here even? Yeah. Oh, wow. How much does that weigh? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but it's lighter than a deck system. Okay. By a lot. I mean, it's all aluminum. It, it, it doesn't right. weigh... Yeah, that's pretty cool. Some of the drawer systems are deceptively heavy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, like a bed vault, like yeah. crazy heavy. Super I just cool. had a wood drawer system in my forerunner, and it was like probably 120 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Eh, maybe 80. Still. <laughs> Not enough. I was trying to scan the website real fast for a wait. <laughs> I missed. So what, with all of your experience and knowledge, do you have any off-roading or overlanding or uh, rooftop tent camping tips or tricks for people who either might be experienced or might have uh, none whatsoever yeah. and be trying to get into it? Sure. Well, I, I read this in the notes earlier and I thought of like a really funny answer. <laughs> And then I was like, I should write that down. And then I didn't write it down. So, <laughs> so instead of giving you a funny answer, I'm going to give you a real one. Um, Damn it. And <laughs> Maybe the funny one will come to you. <laughs> this is going to be probably specific to anybody that is in my camp where you're driving an older vehicle because you're dumb and you like old things, but you know that it's going to probably break eventually. Mm -hmm. um, be able to and be ready to fix your shit. Yes. Because especially if you are quote unquote overlanding or if you're out there, you know, you're not going to be very accessible to people that are going to be able to come help you. So you need to be able to get unstuck, you know, <laughs> like get a dead man, get a winch or something like right. that. Traction boards. Um, and then, yeah. Traction boards for sure. And then I travel with like, uh, I have a, a, a bin that is just tools and like car shit for when everything breaks. I, I bring my whole ratchet set with me when I go camping. Yeah. Um, and like, Backup plan. I have to. <laughs> radiator fluid, everything, all of it. Because I'm, I just. I'm nope. picturing what I have kept in the back of the Land Cruiser for three years. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I broke down, I think it was a, a holiday special. And it was like, uh, Taylor, are you familiar with. Um, uh, he changed it. It used to be at Hoonable on Twitter, but Bozy. Uh-uh. No, I'm not. So he is, 
like the internet he's twitter's version of like an automotive encyclopedia if you're like yeah, hey bozy he's, okay where does this part number number do he'll tell you every car that's ever had that part on it kind of thing but cool. he recommended buying this mechanic set of tools and it was on sale for like 70 bucks when it's normally like 300 dollars kind of thing and i've literally just yeah. had that in the back of the land cruiser and i've used it uh, enough times that it was a very good investment. <laughs> it's worth it's yeah. worth your investment the first time you use something like that. Yeah, and it and it has. So, I've only added like pliers. <laughs> oh, right. Um, when you have a chance, send me the link to that because I currently <laughs> have it's on the floor about twelve feet away, but it's like an old mechanics bag, just with yep. all of the shit I've accumulated for like the off road trips over the years dumped into it. It's not very efficient. It's actually probably a, a hazard. <laughs> I'm Googling. I mean, it, I, so. I definitely have that too. Like fuses and light bulbs just floating around. Yeah. Wires, everything. Still have a, I have a fuse for my car in the cup holder still. It's been there for like six months. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should put that somewhere. I, I opened a, a bin in the back of the Lankers the other day and just found tail light bulbs. I didn't even know they were in there. Just <laughs> Is the Lankers are missing bulbs and <laughs> all, all the is that uh, why they're not working ra random update on the land cruiser i had an issue with the taillights not illuminating i had uh so the brake lights still worked but the taillights when you turn on the headlights the side markers wouldn't turn on and the and the taillights wouldn't turn on checked fuses uh checked harnesses like ran voltmeters literally one wire was slightly loose on a the relay down under the kick panel like i don't know and you just move the wire a little bit and it works. Wow. <laughs> and then you'll hit a bump one day and it'll jiggle and itself it loose again. And yeah. I'll kick the kick panel and it'll work. Yep. I'm assuming Until that's why they call it the kick panel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, fun. Anyways, that's my advice. Uh, either that or buy, buy something nice. <laughs> a nice vehicle. <laughs> yeah, buy, buy some <laughs> update in years. Yeah. <laughs> They, you're, you're actually investing in what the automotive companies had spent millions and millions of dollars developing. Bankrolling <laughs> you, it's one. only thousands. Yeah. <laughs> only. Only. Well, his jump from the 80s to a 2000 truck is, that is fairly uh, substantial. Yeah, that is substantial. It's huge. The truck or the jump? Also, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. exactly. God, could you imagine jumping a huge super duty with an eight I, foot oh no, no 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 i think that's a truck you jump once no yeah, yeah, yeah. i bought it i bought it in south it's Dakota. not a truck there's, after that there's some pretty sus rust going on so yeah. we're not jumping well we'll see you have to see how the Ooh, jump the, yeah. jump the bronco mm. we say at this point yeah. you, with your with the you're really out there podcast you start talking to some suspension companies and be like what's up guys yes yeah, I had uh, a guy named Scott from Deaver Springs on, I think my first episode, actually. He was with the, the Dust to Glory couple, correct? Yeah, yeah, Richard mm. and Ashley. Yeah, yeah which yeah, I'm pretty Scott. sure that's how Richard and Ashley then resuspended Little Red. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, totally. Like, there was some networking going on behind the scenes. It definitely was. <laughs> that was a good move on their part. We talked to Richard and Ashley. I was going to say, was that before us or after us? Uh, they yeah. talked to Taylor first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, and then I couldn't, I can't remember when we had them on. Time has started to just. Probably about two months ago. Sure. It could have been two years ago. I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> I know it's not two years ago. We didn't do the podcast two years ago. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, That's funny. sweet. Cool. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah. Taylor, no appreciate it. Super fun. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. Any more random news you just want to break on us? Like, oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> I don't, uh, <laughs> so you, there's so much up there, and, uh, <laughs> but no, nothing I can say out loud just yet, but lots of cool stuff coming. So keep your awesome. eyes peeled. Awesome. Well, Thanks. once it's public, you know, give us a shout. We'll be happy to have you back on the show. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks guys. And I'm, eventually I'm going to come visit because I've, I've seen so many pictures of what the oh, manufacturing yeah. process has turned into that. I just want to come up and see it. Yeah, yeah, and I want to go to Montana, please. so I'm coming to visit for sure. Yeah, what are you guys driving? Why aren't you guys running a GFC yet? What's going on? Uh, uh, turns out <laughs> it's expensive to feed kids. 
if we stop feeding them, I can buy all kinds of off-road bits, oh, but yeah. it yeah. is generally and frowned upon. I, I currently only have a Mazda Miata, so. What? Yep. Do you know He's, what this podcast is about? Yeah. I do. And I'm, I'm hopefully going to buy Chris's Forerunner in the <laughs> not too distant future. And maybe we can throw a tent on that. As, as soon as so. somebody buys the Land are, Cruiser. Are, are we talking like an Emmy Hall Miata? Is it like no, a no, lifted no, no, no. Miata? Okay. His is I, too nice. It's, it's no. It's, I mean, it goes through the winter and it gets snow tires and everything. But it's, it's like I drive it, you know, a lot every sure, day. Sure, sure, so sure. I, it has to be like. Dude, usable let's put, a, let's put a super light on it How yes, cool would that, that would be, be hysterical it could hold it i to mean be honest it, it rated. Hold it, but the super light might be the length of the miata it's like probably it might have to be the miata. To t- yep <laughs> probably i do have a trailer hitch we could support it in the back <laughs> that'd be so cool he, the best was he wanted to get a uh, a cargo carrier for the hitch which is oh, why it's fucking has terrible. this was like the worst decision he, of all time Taylor, he bought one so big it looked like you could hide a couple of bodies in it. It was comical. It was just the worst thing ever. <laughs> and by a few bodies, you mean like probably five. It was like like wow. adult chins. Yeah. It was as tall as the bottom of the bumper of the car to the top of the roof, and it was like. Was it wider? Awesome. Um, I never really noticed that in no, the pictures. If it was wider no, than your I, car, I, actually. I think the car had maybe four inches on it. <laughs> That's not much. <laughs> no no so all right guys all right sweet that thank you pleasure. Taylor. thanks yeah, taylor that's what, where nice where do you, you want to plug stuff i plugged why rot uh you're really out there um it's on all of the stuff you know apple spotify whatever uh all check of the it stuff <laughs> apple um, yeah i i spent most of the time talking about go, go fast, fast campers <laughs> so uh that's like that's everything right yeah uh, that's it. I'm good. And you can, you can check out Taylor's 35 millimeter photography. Oh yeah. 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 At, at, at Whaler Tallis on the old IG. Whaler Tallis. I'm glad I let you Dang pronounce it. it. Cause I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I actually, I guess I could, I, I do. I, I am an, I'm a musician as well. I have a country Ooh. band. Um, cool. my, my stage name is Whaler. Um, here, I'll show you. I'm going to take my belt off real quick and I'm going to show you my Oh belt. boy. <laughs> For the audio listener. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like how I said audio listener. Like there's a different version of listener. <laughs> For so, the visual listener, that's not. The, yeah. For the visual viewer. This is made by a, a fella in nice. California named Johnny Fritz. Um, Dude, that's pretty yeah. great. That is pretty great. Super cool. It's for the listener. It's a leather belt that says Whaler and has an armadillo in Texas on it. Super cool. Is the is the white for the letters? Is that a dye or is it like a paint a paint on? I think it's like I think it's painted. Okay. But it's pretty. You know, it's not really. That's going anywhere. still some serious art. Because I've been I've been using the same leather belt since college, which at this point is quite a while ago now. What the um, fuck? What? Yeah, I'm a. How? I haven't I haven't grown much. <laughs> I, so I haven't grown either, but I only get like two years out of a belt and it's dead. <laughs> well, I, I, my mom bought me a good belt. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Fair. <laughs> my mom went to the mall I, and went to Buckle and got me a good belt. Yeah. <laughs> she she my showed Cole's up. belts don't stand up to that. <laughs> and she showed up like freshman year. Oh, by the way, I bought you a belt. And I was like, what? Where did this thing? Okay, fine. Like, I mean, Chris, pull up your pants, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that yeah, I think I was in college long enough to go for sagging to be a thing. Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, Taylor, thank you so much for <laughs> yeah. joining us. Thanks. Have so a much, great guys. rest of the evening. Thanks, Taylor. Y'all Hopefully, too. we'll talk to you soon. Adios. Bye.